fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty hi yo silver, the Lone Ranger. In the early days of the western United States, cattlemen, sheep ranchers, and miners became bitter enemies. Living as neighbors but separated by their interests, there might have been open warfare if it were not for the masked rider of the plains. It was he who made them realize that there was room for everyone in the great new territory, and that only by cooperation could the winning of the West be accomplished. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver! We're heading for Cedar Grove! Tell us waiting in the trail ahead! Hi, oh, Silver! Away! <laughs> The village of Cedar Grove, nestling at the base of a towering hill, owed its prosperity to the cattle industry, although recently an important gold strike had been made nearby. A prospector had discovered a rich vein a little more than halfway up the hillside and had sold his claim to an eastern syndicate. Bull Scanlon had been imported by the syndicate to manage the mine made difficult by its position. As our story opens, he is directing some blasting operations and... Stand back there! He's going to let loose! Let her go! Right. Hey, look what happened. Uh, the blast will powder loose some more shale. It's tumbling down on the town. Bet that'll make them town's folks madder than ever. Ah, the blazes with them. We gotta blast out this horde, don't we? Get back to work. Clear out the tunnel. Signal one is clear, we'll blast again. All right, boys, get a move on now. Oh, Pete, you better get in there and show the boys what to do. Wait a second. Look down the trail. Huh? Reckon we're getting another visit from them towns, folks. Oh, we are, are we? Jake! Hey there! What you want, fool? Rouse out the guards. Looks like trouble again. Tell them to get their rifles and stand by for orders. Sure thing! I don't know if you're handling this right, fool. Why ain't I? Well, you can't hardly blame them for being mad, can you? I got orders to make this mine pay. I'm not going to cost the men I work for extra cash for a lot of fool fixings. And if they don't like it in town, they can go to blazes. Maybe they're tough. But if they fool with me, they'll find I'm a blame sight tougher. Here they come. Boys are set, Lou. Good. Maybe they'll have the chance to earn their pay. That's old Grayson with them. Yeah. Grayson, eh? I've been hankering to meet up with him. He's the one that's been doing most of the hollering, ain't he? Yeah. Well, he's due to get told off. It'll do him good to learn miners don't jump to hoop for him like cowmen. Oh, 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 oh. That's him? Yeah. Watch me. Mr. Scanlon? That's me. My name's Grayson. Maybe you've heard of me. Well, maybe I have. What of it? My friends here have asked me to speak for them. Seems like there's some things that'd pay us to talk over. I think so. You've been doing quite a bit of blasting here. Uh Uh-huh. I'll tell you how it is. You got your work to do, and just like the rest of us, I reckon you got your problem. 
Don't suppose you'd get much ore out less than you use blasting powder. But I wonder if you've stopped to think of what could happen if anything went wrong. I know my business. Sure. I never said you didn't. But you ever stopped to look over the formation of the land hereabouts? Why should I? Well, this hill here is mostly shale. Every time you set off one of your blasts, we get some of that shale on us in town below there. Now, it ain't been nothing to complain about special so far. But what we're afraid of is that maybe one of these days something will loosen. Maybe you'll set off a bigger blast than usual. You savvy what could happen then? What? You could start the whole side of the hill to sliding. And right at the bottom is town. You could bury Cedar Grove under shale ten feet deep. So what am I to do? Now, don't misunderstand. We don't mean to tell you your business. But we figure there's a couple of things you could do. Yeah? For one, you could dig back into the hill here a ways, a kind of terrace it before you blast. That'd help some. What else are you asking? Well, then when you've done that, you could use smaller charges. Go easy on the powder. Cut down the risk of starting to slide. That all you got to suggest? We figure that'd be enough. You got any notion how much it'd cost to dig like you say? Any idea the men I'd have to hire and feed? Oh, I suppose it would be a mite more expensive. And using but, uh... smaller charges of blasting powder. That'd mean taking twice the time to get out the same amount of ore. Wouldn't that be better than risking folks' lives? What's ailing you folks down below there? Scared of your shadows? Jump every time a piece of loose stone comes rolling down? We ain't no more skittish than most, I reckon. You want my answer? That's what we wrote here for. Then I'll make it short and easy to savvy. You can go to blazes. That? I got a job to do. I was hired because I knew how to do it. I know what's dangerous and what ain't as good as the next fella. And I ain't letting a bunch of long-haired cow nurses and a pack of spooky townsfolks give me orders. There's my answer. Take it and leave it. Wait, men. Scanlon, maybe you got us wrong. Yeah? We come here meaning to be peaceable, and maybe that misled you. It'd suit us better to talk this over reasonable and come to a fair decision. But if you won't have it that way, well, I guess we can play any tune you call. Is that a threat? Yeah, I reckon it is. Me and my friends have had trouble before. First it was rustlers, then squatters and sheepmen. We never went out of our way to hunt our trouble, but when it come, we handled it. Ask those that have gone up against us, those that ain't decorating Boot Hill. They'll allow we can stand up for our rights. You better recollect that and think it over. Jake. Uh-huh. Wait, Bull. Shut up. Jake, tell your men I want these fellows off this property in just 30 seconds. If they ain't on their way by then, drill them. They're trespassers and we can deal with them as such. Get going. Right. Well, man, I reckon we did. Well, men, we'll head back for town. We didn't come with trouble in mind, so we ain't set for it. Next time will be different. Start moving. We ain't through, Scanlon. Come on, men. Blasted meddlers. Bull, you're so doggone headstrong, there ain't no use arguing with you. But those fellas ain't as ready to take this laying down as you seem to think. And it's my notion you've started something you won't be able to finish. Yeah? Get in that tunnel. I just and won't. tell them in there to set the next charge. And make it just twice as large. The Lone Ranger and his faithful Indian companion, Tonto, were approaching Cedar Grove by the trail from the north. Suddenly, there came the sound of a blast, which came from high on the hill they were skirting. That must be the new mine, Tonto. Uh, I... Wait, pull up. Pull, Silver. Pull. Oh, God. I thought... It did. Look there. There's slide. Shale loosened by the blast. It hit him cabin. It's headed that way. And there's someone in that cabin. Come on, Tonto. Come on, Silver. Come on. Get up. Come. I saw a woman standing at the door for a moment. Uh, hurry, old fellow. Hurry. Get him up. Hi there. You in the cabin. Hi. Not hear him. Get out of that cabin. Or go inside. She saw my mask and doesn't know what's happening. Oh, Silver. Oh, oh my. Whoa, oh, oh, God. Whoa. Oh. Come out here. Get clear of the cabin. There's a slide. You hurt. She missed it. You'll be killed. Let me go. Let me go. You can't stay here. Put me down. Put me down. You can't do this to me. Let me go. It's called into the saddle with you. Look up above there. Oh! 
Come on, Silver, come on! Get him up, Scott! Oh, Get him up! Silver. Oh, no. The cabin was buried under tons of earth and stone, only a moment after the masked man and Tonto had ridden away. The townspeople, alarmed by the sound, ran into the street. The rising cloud of dust in the distance told its own story. And the townspeople, noticing the approach of the Lone Ranger and Tonto, with the woman across the masked man's saddle, drew back to give them room. Oh, it's a masked man. And that's a redskin with him. Ain't that Bob's wife there? Uh, make way for him. Bob. Hi, Bob. Come here. Stand Give me what happened? Who are you fellows? Hey, Miss Crimmins. Uh, that slide come close to your place? Here's Bob, Miss Crimmins. Hey, what's the matter? <laughs> oh, honey, what scared you? Your wife had a narrow escape, Bob. Huh? A narrow escape? The, the cabin, Bob, it, it's gone. The slide got it. Everything we own is gone. Buried under all them rocks. Gone, Bob. Gone. Oh, now, May, May, you're all right. That's all that counts. You quit your crying. If, if it hadn't been for, for these men, I, I'd have been killed. You, that's so, stranger. We heard the explosion and saw the slide start. We were close enough to get your wife from the cabin before it struck. And I, I thought they was outlaws and shot at him and, and could have killed him. Don't blame yourself for that. You didn't know the slide. You did just what was natural. Stranger, words ain't much good, but for what they're worth, you, you got my thanks. I'm afraid your home is gone for good. Them blasted miners. Yeah, the light might have hit the town. Yeah, they've got to be stopped. Next thing, somebody will be killed. We'll show them. One side, folks. One Here's side. The hey, you there. Yes? I'm the sheriff here, mister. I'm putting you under arrest. What for? You're a masked crook. Like I'm... places you'll arrest this stranger, Sheriff. I don't care whether he's a crook or not. He just saved my wife's life. And the man that tries to jail him is going to have me to deal with. Uh, what's that? You heard me. Him and the Redskin got my wife clear of the cabin just before that slide struck. Now just lay a hand on him and see what happens to you. They're all right, Sheriff. Leave them be, Sheriff. You ought to be thanking them, not jailing them. I'm siding with Bob. Yeah. And so am I. Uh, that's all right, folks. I didn't rightly savvy what had happened. Sorry, stranger. I reckon from the sound of it, you stand in pretty solid with the folks right now. Who's responsible for that blasting up there? Well, Saul, you can tell you more about it than I can. Saul, you just was up there, weren't you? I was. What did he say? I talked to the fellow in charge, an hombre named Bull Scanlon. Uh huh. And he as much as said we was to mind our own business. Said he'd do as he pleased and we could whistle for all he cared. Bull Scanlon said that? He did. We ain't gonna stand for it, are we? Boys, we ought to do something about it. Let's all go up there. We'll run them miners clear out of the country. Wait, man. We'll handle this legal. We'll, we'll get... do nothing of the kind. We'll handle this like we've handled trouble before. That's why I'm here. Who's willing to ride up the trail with me? Come on. We'll go along to teach them skunks a lesson. I'm no, hold on. You can't, fellas. We Sheriff, can't. we've tried to be fair, and we've tried to handle this peaceful. Now the time for talk has passed, and we've got to act. No, sir, you're wrong. You Men, can't do get this. guns, clubs, or anything else as handy. Saddle up and gather where the trail starts. We're settling this business right now. Uh, come on. Yep, we ride. Uh, come on, Silver. Get him up, Scott. Oh, Silver. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments. Thank you.
Now to continue our story. When the townspeople, aroused by the slide that had destroyed a small cabin at the edge of town, decided to use force against the miners, the Lone Ranger and Tonto rode ahead. The trail was steep and difficult, and it was two hours later that Tonto approached Bull Scanlon, where he directed his men in... Get Timbers in there, Rocky, and show up that entrance. I want that fixed up before we knock off for the night. Well, what do you want? Me want talk of you. The savvy mining? Or anything about blasting powder? Or Me powder? not want them job. Huh? You come this way. Now, look here, Redskin. I ain't got no time for fooling. State your business and clear out so that I can work. You come. It not take long. Where to? Rock. Over there. Something there you want to show me, you see, eh? Uh, well, lead on. But if you're just wasting my time, I'll boot you clean over the side of the hill. Me not wasting time. What's over there? You see him. Uh, it takes an engine to make nothing sound like something. I ain't never seen a beat of you, Redskins. You walk him round rock. Yeah? Uh, I don't see... Make a sound, Bull, and you'll regret it. Mast! Why, that blasted Redskin... I'll oh. act it on my orders. I wanted to talk with you, but not where your men could see me. What do you want with me? There's a mob from town on its way up the trail at this minute. Huh? Blasting powder, you said, off, started a small slide that destroyed a cabin. It was just luck that no one was killed. Townspeople have lost whatever patience with you they may have had. They're coming here to settle the score. Let them come. What do you think I hired guards for? I'll teach them fools a lesson that'll stay with them. They can't. You won't. I tell You're you... in the wrong and you know it. Maybe there's no legal power that can force you to carry on your operations here with care. Nevertheless, you have no right to endanger lives. Who are you to give me a lecture? Never mind that. I'm telling you, your guards will not be called out. And just to let that mob do as it blame pleases, huh? Well, if you think I'm going to... You're going to do exactly as I say. You'll go straight to blame. Because you have no choice. What do you Grab mean? him, Tonto. Uh, hey, wait. I'll uh, hold him down, Tonto. Pick this gag tight. Uh, <laughs> me, Tonto. I'll move the horses back to the bend in the trail. Uh, We're taking Bull with us. Uh, Ready? There. Him tied. Hey, good. Now give me a hand with him. I'll pull him across, Silver. Where? Take him. Down the trail, Tonto. The mob's coming up. We'll meet it on the way. With Bull's our prisoner, and we're getting him through unharmed. In the meantime, the anger of the townspeople rose as they ascended the trail. Their leaders made no attempt to calm them, and the men shouted their threats. With... We've had enough of them blasted miners. This is cattle country. They don't belong here. They're just here to take what coal there is. They ain't helping us none. We'll give them 24 hours to light out. Why that long? Tell them to start traveling now. If they won't, we'll just give them a dose of lead. Boy, you shouldn't not act so hasty. You're just going to get in back. Sheriff, this don't concern you. You come along of your own choice, but don't try to get in our way. So you know better than to let the boys get out of hand like this. Yeah? Well, I feel the same as they do. I talked to that fellow running the mine, talked to him man to man and reasonable. Well, he wouldn't listen. Threatened to shoot us up if we didn't get off there properly. We ain't hardly back to town but what there's a bad slide. I know. And if it hadn't been for the masked man and the engine, Bob's wife would have been killed. There's a limit, Sheriff, and we've reached it. Shucks, I can see your side of it. Fact is, if I wasn't wearing this badge, I'd likely be doing the same as you. Yep. But just the same, I've got advice against Hey, look I... up ahead. Ain't that the masked man? Looks like the white horse he rides. It is. Ain't no mistake in that horse. There's the engine. But who's with him? We'll be able to see in a second. Why thunder? Well, what is it? That fellow riding double on the masked man's horse. Ain't that... Bull scandal. Oh, no. Boys, that's Bull Scanlon with the masked man. He's gagged. You can see it from here. Rain in, boys. Pull up. Oh. Oh. Hi. Careful, boys. Ain't much room on this trail. Get your horses in hand. Hey, you see what the masked man's done? He rode ahead, caught Scanlon, and saved us the trouble. We'll take Bull off the masked fellow's hand. Hi there. We'll take that umbring, mister. Go, go, Silver. Go, 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 By gravy, you two fellas got Bull all by yourself. And we're keeping him. For you, this Bull. man's our prisoner. If you want him, you'll have to fight for him. Bob, huh? you're going back to town with us. What's up? You'll see later. All right, men, stand clear. Say, what's the idea? Turn what back you... to town and you'll find out. What do you care, Bob? Sure, I'm with you. Let's go, Tonto. Get him up. Get him up, fella. Get along, boy. Come on, Silver. Wait, hold on. Uh, looks like that masked man don't wait for nobody. He's up to something, by thunder. Maybe I should have jailed him after all. After what he done? You're crazy. Now what do we do? I don't know what you others figure on, but I'm heading back to see what the masked man's up to. All right, then. Get up. Get up. Get up. 
Reaching the bottom of the trail, well in advance of the townsmen, the Lone Ranger turned his prisoner over to Tonto, who rode on to their secret camp. Then with Bob, the masked man approached the edge of town, where he gave the young man certain orders. Bob entered town alone, was gone for a little more than half an hour, then rejoined the masked man, leading a pack horse. Here's all the stuff you told me to get, friend. Oh, there. Oh. Plenty of blasting powder? Sure thing. Fuse? I never forgot that. You told your wife you'd be gone overnight? Uh Uh-huh. (laughs) <laughs> Stranger, you sure made a hit with her. This is the first time I ever said I was going to stay away overnight without her raising the roof. <laughs> but she's got the notion anything you say to do is bound to be all right. I'll not be with you. Huh? You won't? Well, what do you want me to do? Stake out a claim. A claim? I don't savvy. That's why I told you to get these supplies. You're going to stake out a claim just as though you were a prospector. Well, now, look here, stranger. I... I'm willing to do whatever you say. I, I owe you plenty. But you sure ain't got no idea I can just ride up that hill and find a vein of ore, have you? No. Well, then what is your it? Your claim is going to be staked out legally, however. It won't be your fault if the claim doesn't happen to contain ore. I'll be blessed if I can see what you're driving at. Eh? The trail leading to the mine continues on till it reaches the top of the hill. Mm-hmm. And I don't want you to go that high. About a hundred yards above the mine will be sufficient. Yeah? Directly above the mine, understand? As far as you've gone... But I still don't savvy why I'm staking the claim. Oh, wait. Huh? Here come the townsmen back. There's no time to explain further now. I want you on your way before they can question you. Get going. But listen. Get going, I say. I'll send Tonto to find you and tell you the rest. Tonto? Right. He'll find you. Now on your way. Get up. Get along there. Get up. Hey, 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 There's a the man. Hey there. What do you do with that miner? Ranger. One moment. Men, you started to the mine this afternoon looking for trouble. There could easily have been bloodshed if you'd reached it. And there will be yet. Do as I say, and I promise you there won't. What do you mean? Wouldn't you rather settle this trouble peacefully? That mine has a right to be developed. Your only possible objection is that the mine endangers the town. Well, drive the miners away, and they'll be back with the law to enforce their rights. But come to an agreement with them, and your troubles are over. We tried that. They wouldn't have it. So? Well... A bull Scanlon will sign an agreement promising to follow the precautions you suggest and to admit responsibility for any damage to the town that may be done. Will you forget your quarrel with him? That'd be fair enough, I guess, but he won't do it. Be at the mine tomorrow at ten in the morning. Huh? You have my word you'll get that agreement signed and delivered. Come on, Silver. Come on! following morning, everyone who had heard of the Lone Ranger's promise made the long trip up the hill to see the manner in which it would be kept. The miners themselves, puzzled by the absence of Bull Scanlon, had dropped their work and stood about in curious, uncertain groups watching the arrival of the townspeople with suspicion. One group was made up of Pete Winthrop, Bull Scanlon's second-in-command, Saul Grayson, and the sheriff, and then... You say a mass man took Bull? Just so. If any harm's come to him, you No have... need to worry, I reckon. If the mask hombre had been up to anything like that, he'd probably have turned Scanlon over the boys from town that was hot to catch him yesterday. Sheriff, I want you fellas to understand me. Yeah? I've been again the way Bull's been running things. But as long as he's given the orders, there ain't been much I could say. We can see that. And as for Bull, well, I reckon you ain't understood him so good neither. Don't stand up for him. Well, now, Mr. Grayson, I am and I ain't. What I mean is, Bull was in the wrong. No arguing about that. He was an awful fellow to get his mind sought a certain way and keep it there. That's how he got his nickname, being surprised and bullheaded. He's that for a fact. But on the other hand, you always knew where you stood with Bull and what he planned to do. He'd never lie about anything. He'd fight you and he'd cuss you and he'd never give nobody but himself credit for having sense. And yet I never heard of him being crooked or sneaky or underhanded. That's all very well, but just the same, I'm... Hold on. Here comes the masked man now. And he's got Bull with him. And it's ten o'clock to the second. Now maybe we'll learn what this is all about. Oh, 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 oh. Get down. Pete, get the boys. Get Jake. Grab this masked fellow. I'll show the scum. Not so fast. You Your men are outnumbered. They try anything now, they're beaten. Oh, you think we're scared? Why, we'll... You'll do nothing. Sheriff, watch the men. See that trouble doesn't break out. There won't. Hear that, fellas? No ruckus. I ain't standing for it. 
We're here to see what the stranger's got up his sleeve. Until we find out, things are going to be plumb peaceful. All right, sir. They'll behave, stranger. Oh, I promised these people you'd sign an agreement to follow their suggestions and be responsible for whatever damage your blasting may cause. Then you bit off more than you can chew. I won't sign no such thing. You told me you wouldn't agree because you wanted to make a profit for your employers. You heard right. You mean to say that a property as rich as this couldn't afford the safeguards the townspeople ask? That ain't the question. I'm here to make all the profit I can. And what would your employers say if you made no profit at all? If you couldn't even keep the mine open? Huh? The blasting powder you set off has already started one landslide. Well, the town isn't alone in danger. Right, and right. I'll prove it to you. Sato! Be ready. Tell Bob to set off the charge. Set off the charge? What? what are them fellas doing up there? Bob has staked out a claim directly over your mine. It's legal and you can't prevent his working it. Oh, wait. There. He can't do that. If he sucks off the powder up there, he's likely to start a slide that'll bury his mine. Which is exactly what you've been doing. But there ain't no gold there. There can't be. How do you know? He's got the right to blast to see if his claim contains gold or not, hasn't he? Why, the dirty blasting... Fool, now you're no better off than these townspeople. They can't stop your blasting, but neither can you prevent Bob from doing the same. Which is it going to be? Are you going to meet the townspeople's demands? Or are you going to take the risk that a blast overhead will bury your mine and throw you and these men out of work? <laughs> My golly fool, the masked man's got you dead to right. It's just a dose of your own medicine. Why in blazes didn't we think of that? Well, Bull? Well, I... I don't know. Don't be I... afraid to admit it when you're beaten. There's no way to get out of this except by a friendly compromise. Bull, don't be such a doggone stubborn idiot. You just ain't got no choice. I'd like to wring the mass man's neck. Which same wouldn't do you much good. But I'm licked, and if a mine's to keep open, I'll have to give in. Grayson, what's your turn? The mask man named him. Then put him in writing, and I'll sign. But I'll tell you this. It wasn't you fellas that made me. It was that hombre there. Hey! Just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated.